BBC One, 1982. If you read poetry in the streets, you can be apprehended for causing a disturbance. We're talking about giving us space, giving us room. We're looking at derelict buildings. We're looking at, at things decaying. We're talking about new life, new vigor, putting life into these things. We want to do it. Where's the money? Ha! 20 pounds a week. Doesn't even buy gin. is something dramatic for God's sake. We want passion. We want power. And so, once more, erect on the summit of the earth, we hurl our defiance at the stars and we spit. We spit on the altar of art. The One World International Poetry Festival, Amsterdam. 1983. Marijuana, once thought to be a revolutionary drug, a social and creative force, now cripples the minds of the modern youth, inflicts the damage of stunted perception and stabs in the lance of lethargy and guilt. Yet it's another consumer must for the unemployed kids brought up on tribe rock and identity kits. And stabbing so often, murders so quick, and yet the existence of crime is positive proof of a fault in the line, a breach in the order, a sign for mankind, all here for you to see and act but action redundant, the terrible fact. For the division of spirit, the argumentative wine is blunting the spear of our socialist goal. BBC One, 1985. Well, now to Malcolm Bennett, and uh, controversial is one of the nicer words that people have used to describe his work. He's a very committed socialist poet who, apart from his own work, also reads poetry from the past set to some incredibly powerful music composed and played by Steve Haley. Now, it's a long time since Malcolm performed in Bristol, although he was based here for around two and a half years until very recently. And often those shows ended in uproar, occasionally even in violence. Now, for RPM, he agreed to return to Bristol to perform just one more show in the city. This was a poem that was written 50 years ago. 50 years when we weren't even born by a man known as Hugh McDermott. This poem is called The Belly Grip, and it is about hunger. Thank you. Come, let us put an end to one thing, now that science gives us the power and make it impossible for any men to exercise for another hour. Any influence on other men that depends on economic pressure. Today it ends. I believe that poetry can no longer afford to be neutral, equally indifferent to right and wrong, knowing no pity or no anger. I believe that the only true poets should believe in purgative action. The great arena of words is open before us. Words that must be fists, that can batter and beat, that can punch and rip. Words that must be used as the lance. It was a case of science tested. I was beaten up there, people used chairs, I was attacked, I obviously had four stitches, a black eye, bruised ribs. And I mean, it is very frightening. These people were people like the British movement, and it is very terrifying. Of course, afterwards, it becomes, once again, you realise that, that you've, well, they've reacted. And in other words, for them to react violently, it means they must have been listening to the words that you were saying. I now demand a poetry of such stride and passion 
that it should scorch the very surface of the planet if it were to be unleashed. People were shouting, what right have you got to demand? And of course, my right is that I'm an artist, and so therefore, it is my right to be able to tell people exactly what I want. But you can't expect people to like that, surely not. No. <laughs> I don't expect them to like it, I expect them to, to listen. Furthermore, I demand a poetry that is violently against nonsense, against the elitist child scrawl of the surrealist. At the turn of the century, when people like Joyce and Eliot tried to like change modern literature, they didn't know what they were talking about, and neither did anybody else, because the things that they wrote didn't make any sense. If it doesn't make any sense, I can't see the point in even bothering with it at all, you know? I don't give them any pity, I just despise them. I mean, there's enough of them in Bristol to make you throw, you know? I tell you, I wouldn't trust a surrealist as far as I could split a bus on the... Come. Let us finish this whole damn farce of law and order on murder-based, on the power to coerce and starve and kill with all its hypocrisy, cruelty and waste. And safe from all human interference, give every man at least ample means to live. I believe that people turn to rock and roll as a means of escapism. I also believe what the Ayatollah said, and that was Western pop music is turning young people's minds. People listen to it, it doesn't mean anything, it's, it's just a tune that repeats incessantly and therefore is driven into the mind. And, and people just dance and clap to it. it. It means nothing, it has nothing. See, sometimes it's a very difficult job to stand up here and to talk above hundreds of people that are talking back and usually they're talking nothing but absolute drivel. Yeah, you can say like me, but I can do this, I stand here. There's more than you do. I believe, I believe in victory, and I believe I shall have victory at the end of the day. Definitely. I have no qualms. The poet's Templar will change society. The poet has the ability to change society. If he pulls his socks up and tightens his belt, if he rises early and works late, the poet will change the day. Anything else? Come! Let us put a premium then on your example and persuasive force. Not that they're likely to carry far in maintaining present conventions, of course. Since these all depend on the belly grip and will change completely when that's let slip. transfer all moral issues and social relations to a higher plane where men may agree that if they don't can never be forced to submit again to the will of others by hunger and the want it's time to end that sadistic cans! <laughs> the belly grip. Ladies and 
and gentlemen, Steve Haley.